Hello and welcome to Unfathomable Crimes. Today's update is some more shocking, horrific, there's no words for it, details that are coming from Henrietta, Oklahoma, where Jesse McFadden, he killed his wife, her three children and two of their friends on his property. Um, on a day when he should have been in court facing charges of child exploitation. This is a really difficult topic to cover. I'm going to do my best to cover it sensitively. There are a lot of victims' families still involved in this case, trying to find evidence as to how this happened, why this happened, what checks weren't in place, and the disturbing truth of what actually went on at Jesse McFadden's property with his wife and her children. So this story is from three days ago. It was published on May 6th. And this is the first update that came after they announced the individuals who were killed on the scene. And it was after they entered the property to find out. Now, this was actually Ivy Webster, who was one of the, the friends of the family's children. Um, her family have went into the property to try and find out what went on and this has obviously been cleared by the police and authorities to do this and this was what they found inside the house from sex toys to restraints inside the house of horrors where killer raped and murdered six jesse mcfadden shot his wife her three children and their two friends in the head and then killed himself drugs Restraints and sex toys have been found inside the Oklahoma House of Horrors, where convicted sex offender Jesse McFadden shot his wife, her three children, and their two friends in the head before killing himself. Now, he was convicted sex offender. He had served time for rape, served 16 years for rape. He got released early. If he had been kept in for his full term, which was 20 years, he would still be in prison. He wouldn't have been able to cause this harm. He had been freed from prison early on good behaviour, despite facing new sex charges in a separate case for soliciting nude images from a teen while he was in prison. So while he was in prison, he had managed to get a hold of a burner phone and he was messaging an underage girl and there was inappropriate messages being sent, inappropriate photos being sent to this girl and she was another of Jesse McFadden's victims. But McFadden went on to murder his wife, Holly Guess, 35, her children, Riley Elizabeth Allen, 17, Michael James Mio, 15, and Tiffany Dorr Guess, 13. Mio said Tiffany was close friends with Ivy Webster, 14, and 16-year-old Brittany Brewer. Webster's family have now entered the 39-year-old's home to piece together what happened to their daughter. And Ivy and Brittany were there as friends of Tiffany, and they were there for a sleepover. Something that happens in every country with teenage girls, they have sleepovers. They go over to their friends' houses. There was nothing for these parents to suspect anything untoward would be going on at the house. And these are some of the items that were found at the home by Ivy Webster's parents. And obviously the police are aware of this. There's restraints. There's hooks at the bed, which would be used for tying. And obviously there is also the sex ties, which were mentioned. Her father, Justin, told KFOR, we can't have parents go through what we have. I'm angry. This should have never happened. I feel that my daughter, even right now, is standing behind me telling me, Dad, keep going, keep going, keep doing this. He came across a twin-sized bed laying on the floor of the living room with a blanket across it. Next to the living room was a bed where the bed frame had restraints bolted into it. The restraints still had chains attached. And he has some of the restraints, the drugs. It it does look like a house of horrors at this point. And you can only imagine what those children and his wife went through and what they were going through. Had How long had this been going on? This couldn't have just been <laughs> an instantaneous event for reasons which we'll go into after this article. Just 10 feet away was the kitchen where another restraint was on the counter, which included fresh locks and chains. The kitchen was filled with trash and sticky insect pads full of roaches. A human dog collar, handcuffs, drug paraphernalia and weapons were sitting out in the laundry room. There was a syringe still filled with a dark coloured substance sitting in the room. And this is Jesse McFadden 
the piece of shit who took his own life after taking so many others' lives. And there is speculation that it is now more than six individuals. It comes as McFadden was scheduled to be in court on Monday for the start of a jury trial on charges that while in prison for rape, he used a contraband cell phone to solicit a 16-year-old girl and exchange nude photographs with her. Those new felony charges were filed in 2017, more than three years before McFadden was released from prison in 2020. That's plenty of time to prosecute any criminal case on the face of the earth said Brett Chapman, a former Tulsa County prosecutor who now works as a defence attorney who reviewed, McFad who reviewed McFadden's case. What happened here? That should have kept him in. And that is exactly what I have been arguing. He should have been kept in. These charges were brought in 2017. He was released in 2020. He should have been kept in prison awaiting trial. That's normal. But he wasn't. He was let out. And then it seems he's been able to move into a house where underage children are present, even though he's a convicted sex offender. The residents, the local community, they were not aware of what he was. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been sending their children over to that house. The grandparents of his three stepchildren, Holly, his wife's children, they became aware of something not co completely right in March of this year, and they questioned Holly on it. Holly said, no, no, it's all been a misunderstanding. But the fact that he'd spent 16 years in prison, that's it's just not a misunderstanding. He'd managed to manipulate his wife. Now, I mentioned that there's other disturbing details that have come out and that there is speculated to be more than six victims now. And that is that Holly's aunt and her parents have gone to the home. They had to clear out personal belongings. The The landlord of the property wanted them out, wanted to dispose of the property. And on doing so and seeing what was there, they have found a number of items which have now since been handed over to the police. And they weren't originally discovered by the police because they were under the floorboards of the house. Items that have been discovered are bloody clothing, Polaroids, photographs of unspeakable acts being carried out on individuals. We are not able to identify ages or identities yet. And a ledger with details of individuals. There are also mobile phones there and we are not sure if those are linked to victims that have yet to be identified as McFadden's victims. So what I'm going to guess that is going to happen now is the police have got all this information, they're going to go over it, and they will likely start to match up this new evidence with anybody who has also been missing from the area. But with all of this now, I am starting to question what was his wife living through? What was her three children living through in this house of horrors? This is not something that happens overnight. This looks like a buildup of equipment, torture materials. What were they going through? And why did she feel like she couldn't speak out? Let's just hope that everybody who needs to be held accountable is that the police are transparent with everything they are working on with all the residents in the area. It's their children who have been put at risk by mishandling of this individual. And let's hope that if there are other victims that they are found and that the information is relayed to their parents, their loved ones, so that they can have some peace. It's horrible for something like this to happen to a child, to a young person, but the not knowing will be destroying those parents, those loved ones. So that is the update on the Jesse McFadden case and the shocking news from Henrietta, Oklahoma. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you again next time. Bye guys.